with training camp right around in the corner for the Chicago Bears. I've already talked about some of the players that I think could break out or surprise in training camp on today's episode. Me and Bobby are going to discuss what undrafted free agents that the, the Bears signed could end up earning a roster spot in this and updates to Karen Amagaje as well as others. We're going to talk about all that plus our biggest questions heading into training camp right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. Me and Bobby in the building today. Bobby, man, we jumping off with the yeah. undrafted free agents, man, that the Bears have signed. I guess they're no longer free agents because we did sign them. The undrafted right. rookies, I guess, is what we should call them at this point. Um, I want to talk about three specifically. We can go to some other ones if you have them on your list or any other ones that you want to talk about. Um, but I want to talk about which ones could earn a roster spot. The first one that I want to talk about, I think this is the most – the, the consensus one that everybody expects to kind of earn that spot with the Bears is Keith Randolph. This is a guy who, when you look at it, out of Illinois already, had some injury concerns, but this is a guy who can get to the quarterback. You look at our defensive tackle uh, spot, we got Andrew Billings, Javon Dexter, Zach Pickens, some veterans that they brought in behind those guys, but Keith Randolph and what he's done in collegiate football, I do think that he's a guy that could end up making that roster, especially with defensive former defensive line coach Eric Washington, who's now the defensive coordinator, uh, liking to develop guys. How do you feel about, about Keith Randolph's chances to make the roster? I like it, man. I feel good about it. Um, we know that Justin Jones is no longer here in the Chicago Bears. They are, you know, they want to be a team that's young, but also pretty damn good. So this yeah. guy's going to have every opportunity right in front of him to go out here and try to prove himself. I'm not mad at it. I say the opportunity is right there. Like we've been saying for the last few weeks, these young guys got to come take that position, though. And I'm happy for him. I think he has a lot of things that you that he can bring to the Chicago Bears. I just I just can't wait to see it uh, happen all on the field, man. For sure. For sure. He's somebody I look at a lot and like that, that how how big he is, how strong he is. He has that NFL uh, body already. I, I think I think that he's somebody that we could end up end up sticking around for the Bears for a long term if he develops and hit that hits that uh, that projection that a lot of people have for him. Um, and then next up that I have on the list is Ian Willer. And for a couple of reasons, we know that he's mainly a special teams guy. And because of the doubt around Valus Jones, I do think that he is somebody that can stick around. But let's also not overlook the fact that he's a solid running back as far as a depth piece in the running back. And he'd be cost effective. I know we still have Travis Homer on the roster, but look at him over uh, 1,154 yards, 14 touchdowns on 177 carries in his collegiate football career. He's also caught 23 passes for 234 yards. I can see this guy's being somebody that they look at to use as a gadget player on the offensive side, but definitely kind of focused on the special team side of, of things. How do you feel about Ian Willard, man? I think he's going to have every opportunity. Right now, it seems like the Bears are really, really harping in on the, the special teams, and they really want to take advantage of the new rule change. And now you got to have somebody that's going to be able to hold the ball, but also, you know, accumulate enough yards to where we can start putting teams on the other, on the other side in some situations they don't want to be in because the Bears keep damn near, because the Bears keep winning the position battle. And yeah. I think that's that's what you got. You got your Dante Pettis that we talked about, the Ian Willis, Vegas Jones. I don't think Trent Taylor is coming back, but these guys, they trying to figure it all out. Roma Dunze has been thrown out there. Tyler Scott has been mentioned. So it seems like the Bears are really, really trying to figure this out. And I think that if you if you don't want to just go straight to the practice squad, you know, what I'm saying give yourself every opportunity to make special teams. And we know special teams, those guys make it based off effort. Yeah. Can you get down now, stay in your lane, make the damn tackle, or when you're receiving the ball, can you hold on to the ball and have some explosive game-changing moments? So you're going to have every opportunity in front of him because nobody really feeling valish right now. He got yeah. everything, every opportunity right in front of him. That is true. I mean, it, it, uh, every, there's so many question marks around Valus Jones, and I look at it this way. I say, if you're in year three and we're not talking about, like, how much can you grow a game, we're just talking about can you even do enough to stay on the football field, yep. that always leaves your position up for grabs, especially yep. when you're looking at somebody who's been a special team specialist and who has had success in that area as well as can be you. Like, anything that you can look at that you can use uh, Valus Jones in, Ian Willer almost fits into that. He's just a running back instead of a wide receiver. And so because of that, 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 that question is always going to be up there, man. I, uh, you look at him, 5'11", 205 pounds as well. Like, this is a dude who can, who can outright score, I mean, uh, can, can, can play football. And sometimes you just need football players 
on your roster. That's a yeah. fact. If A.S. Jones, to be honest with you, he hanging on by a thread. His ass yeah. is skating on thin ice. If we keeping it real, you had you had kick return and punt returns in your bag, and you fumbled the bag so much they took you off punt returns because they thought you was nervous. You can't. You you couldn't focus your eyes. I believe they. I believe Coach Hightower talked about his eyes and making sure you securing the the, the catch before you take off. Bro, we you we, you supposed to came in knowing that. <laughs> like, That's what right. are we talking about? But you said everything right in regards to Vegas Jones and his position for sure. Facts. The next one I have on my list is Carl Jones. This is a defensive lineman, 6'2, 230 pounds out of UCLA. This guy has played so many positions: safety, linebacker, defensive lineman. Like, and again, much like I said with Ian Wheeler, sometimes, especially as those depth pieces, you just want football players. And on top of his ability to play that defensive line, I think that this guy's an athlete. I would not be surprised if, especially with, unless Dominique Robinson shines, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of the undrafted uh, uh, rookies ends up maybe even taking Dominique Robinson's spot because these guys are coming in hungry. Uh, Dominique Robinson, much like we say with Valus, has had three or two seasons. He's going into his third year where he's still a big question mark. We don't know. Even though after some initial promise, we don't know. So I think a guy like Carl Jones, who has done it at a high level, eight sacks over the course of his 57 games in five years at UCLA, I I, I, I like this guy's chance of making the roster. How you feeling? For sure. I think that he comes in with one of the best things that he can offer the Chicago Bears. And, we, and they've shown that they really like it. If you come in and you got some versatile skill set that we can utilize, mm -hmm. you 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 gonna be ahead of certain other guys who are only specialists at, at one thing. So with him coming in playing multiple positions, be said, appearing to be a versatile guy, I think he's gonna have every opportunity just like the rest of these guys. But Hayes, I gotta throw one at you that we ain't okay. talked about yet. I don't even. I didn't even know this guy was on the squad. Maybe I missed it or something like that. But what about the offensive tackle from Canada, Theo Benedict? This is a guy that uh, 10 NFL teams looked at him and wanted to come to their team after the draft or whatever. He was the graded the best offensive tackle in Canada, college, you know, mm. in college and things like that. And he was one of those guys, along with a former bet, Israel Donage, to win one of the best down lineman awards for Canada. I don't know. It's, 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 it's very intriguing when you go off the, you know, you read the accolades and stuff, but we've done that before, so I know we got to tread cautiously. But to hear, and then, you know, we about to get ready and talk about Karen. You know, yeah. this is a guy that's, who, how you feeling about this Theo Benedict guy? I like I like him like what you said. He he was the first one ever to win the back to back uh, uh, award for the, for the best down lineman. Um, he he won it two years in a row. Like this is a guy that I think absolutely could could um could could make the roster, especially when you look at it as a position of need. And what we do know about the Chicago Bears team, on top of that, they like finding their diamonds in the rough. Players that yeah. other people look uh, overlooked. And so I know some people may ask, well, then why wasn't he drafted if he's so good? Because he went to college in Canada, and those guys typically don't get drafted there. Like, yeah. people aren't really looking to recruit football players from, from Canada. as is hockey, right? So right. Um, I do think that this is a guy that definitely could make it. And I didn't even know the part that you pointed out about a, a bunch of teams trying to get this guy to come into their camp. So, listen, I, I wouldn't be surprised, bro. I, think, I would not be surprised at all. That's yeah, kind of that, kind of what this this front office has done a lot of times. For sure. And the last point is we just talked about it with Jones, the versatility. They talking about it was reported that the man, while, while in mini camp, he was playing tackle. But coaches told him, be prepared to play everywhere. So this <laughs> tells me he has some type of versatility that gets you closer to getting in the door. I just can't wait to see what happens, though, because I love the underdog stories with most of these players when they come to Chicago because y'all know how we get out in Chicago. That's a fact. And, and the thing is, too, is that when you're an undrafted rookie, you come in and, you, and, and you're hungry, right? We've, we we got two of them on the roster right now, um, and Jack Sanborn and uh, uh, Tyson Bajant that – actually have played big roles for the Bears at times. Tyson yeah. Bajan became the backup quarterback his first year. He started some games for us last season. And Jack Sanborn as well. Like, we've seen what Jack Sanborn has done and what he's grown into. And we noticed him. We were one of the first podcasts to notice Jack Sanborn. What was it? The first, second preseason game. We were like, like hey, that kid is pretty good. Yeah. So, <laughs> looks like a flying across the field. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, and, you know, these could be the next guys that we look at. And, you know, we, we're not saying that they'll turn into stars or anything like right. that, but these could be the next guys that we do look at as earning a role for the Chicago Bears. And we're saying, hey, can you believe we got these guys as undrafted rookies? It'd be so, crazy. 
Sometimes you got to find them. That's why you pay the scouting department. <laughs> they got to do their job. That's a fact. That's a fact. It's all about one of those players that that was scouted by the Bears um, that we ended up drafting. We traded back into the draft to get this Karen and Magaje. And this is a guy. Well, no, we didn't trade back in to get him. We traded back in to get Austin Booker. I almost mis- made a mistake on that mm-hmm. one. Um, so he's starting off training camp on the non-football injury list. Uh, reportedly, he's still recovering from the quad injury. Uh, he could be cleared at any time. That is what the report said. But how do you feel about Amagaje, especially with like the down around Braxton, Tevin's uh, injury concern, the fact that Amagaje can play tackle or guard how do you feel about him still being on the injury report because i was a i was i'm not gonna lie a couple of days ago when it's when matt eberflew said that he was going to be ready to go i was really happy to hear that but to hear that he's starting off injured still on that injury list and not practicing how do you feel about it i'd rather work out for the best interest of the player and i think that'll benefit the organization in the long run me personally he's not a starter this year so there's no need to necessarily rush him back you can bring him on along i think in, uh, last year october is when he tore the uh quad so he's not even a full year, you know, you know, past surgery, recovery and all that stuff since the injury last happened. So me, if I'm the Chicago Bears or fans, at least I'm not worried about it because our starters are the ones that's, that should be out here healthy. You know what I'm saying? We should be like, hey, we need right uh, Nate Davis. Where you at? You know what I'm saying? And see how the Bears are going to get this offensive line prepared and ready to go for the starters. Now, he was going to be uh, uh, I believe he was going to be a big piece for the depth of the Chicago Bears offensive line. But I don't think in week one, he has to absolutely be ready. I say bring him along, you know what I'm saying, because it's 17 games. You might need him to come and play week eight, week nine, something like that. So right now I'm cool with it. Take your time. When when you when you look at Karen Amagaj, and of course we haven't seen anything in the NFL yet to know. We don't know what what a lot of working with NFL trainers and things like that. Do you see him right now as having the upside of potentially being a starter for you? I would say yes. I would okay. say yes. You you got to go come out there and you got to give credit to a creditors do everybody acknowledges his versatility <laughs> and how he was able to perform well. I know some people are going to knock him for going to Yale, but nonetheless, if you could play football, you could play football, man. It yeah. don't really, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you, you got to fight a little harder to show your work, depending on the school you went to. But if you could play football, you could play football. And if starter, if starting is in his future, his talent is going to let everybody know he should be starting. His talent he's, he's going to speak for itself. So I ain't got no issues with, with him at all. That's a fact. I want to I bring something up here. I know it's not in our topic list, but it just came to me as we're having this conversation. Because I don't think me and you have gotten a chance to really talk about this. There are contracts pending for both Braxton Jones and Tevin Jenkins. When you look at both these players, if you had to decide, like, do you, their future, do you think they're both on the Chicago Bears roster next season? You think one of them's gone? Which one? How are you right now feeling going into training camp about Tevin Jenkins and Braxton Jones' futures with the Chicago Bears? I'm a little nervous about Tevin Jenkins, to be, I mean, to be, to be honest with you, because it, it can be a bottom of the league team. I don't know. If the, we just use Arizona for an example. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And if they have a bad season, they say, man, our offensive line was terrible, but we got this young guard over there. Outside of injury concerns, he's a hell of a fucking guard. Somebody will overpay. I remember I remember a few years ago, we was like, hey, the Bears should look at Ben Powers. <laughs> bro, that's funny. I didn't even think of I haven't heard thought about that name in so long. How bro. did that turn out? You know what I'm saying? And they, yeah. some people overpaid for him in, in, in the belief. Or Mike McGlinchey, I believe, was another one that was out of that's San Francisco. One, yep. Yeah, and he didn't have a great season. So it's going to always be somebody that's going to overpay for offensive linemen because we know it's not too many good ones out there. So I'm feeling confident that – uh. Uh, I'm a little nervous about Tevin Jenkins, but I do believe he'll be straight. Braxton Jones, I'm not too worried about it. I don't see Tevin uh, Braxton Jones getting elite left tackle money, but he's going to get good left tackle money. And mm-hmm. I will be okay with that because then now you ain't got to push out additional resources just to retain him. I'll be okay with that. Yeah, I, I go back and forth. Like Tevin, I think it really comes down to – Tevin, it's a combination. He has to not only be healthy, but I think Tevin Jenkins would have to have damn near a Pro Bowl season for the Bears to bring him back. I just, and that's not, again, not a knock. We know what he is when he's on the football field. He's an absolute dog. But I just look at the injury concerns there, and it's just like, you're already going to get every offensive lineman is going to miss a game or two, right? Over the season, you expect that. But Tevin came into this with, uh, with injury concerns his rookie year. And I just, knowing from what I've seen from Ryan Poles, I just either he's going to get a really, really team friendly deal 
or they're gonna they're gonna let him go. And I, maybe that's just my PTSD, bro. I'd love to be wrong on that. I think it's I, I think it's on the table because when we talk about how it started with this regime, it didn't start yeah. well because they wanted that's to right. damn near trade the guy. <laughs> they damn near wanted to trade him. But ever since then, you know what I'm saying? They went through that and he's been good. He speaks about being in Chicago, but we also know that when it's time to talk contract, whatever number you throw out, Ryan Post, it could be viewed as disrespectful. And if he's feel if he feels disrespected, you lost one. But on the flip side, he can say, "Hey, I want this number," and Ryan Post can be like, "To hell with that! I'm not paying you that." So it's it's a thing that I understand the uh, you know the the apprehension regarding that. So it can happen though. But I'm a little nervous because if he is healthy, price just went up. Yeah, that's a fact. That's and it's gonna get steep because he's that good when he's on the football field. Exactly. But well, with that said, uh, we're going to end this with some of the biggest questions that we have. The Bears actually put on the, they have their first full practice tomorrow. So before that starts, let's talk about some of those questions. I'll turn this one actually over to you, Bobby, first. What's some what's one of the biggest questions you have for the Bears heading into training camp? Will Nate Davis lock in? Enough of the <laughs> bullshit. A one. Yeah. Will you lock in? It's, 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 uh, look, I'm not getting into the personal business. You know what I'm saying? I'm the, y'all know I'm not doing that, but we're talking about football right now. Enough is enough. I'm tired of hearing about you working out individually by yourself on the sideline. I'm tired of hearing about you not being ready to go or not involved in what's going on around the team. Look, let's get back. Let's lock in and let's push. Let's push. That's my number one question. I got another one, though. <laughs> okay. My, my number one for this is that looking at this training camp is how good is the defensive? How good does that defensive line look? That's a great question. Cause, cause it, it, like we finished off last season looking really good. We started off last season looking like trash. And while I know it's easy to look at and say, well, we finished the season strong. So we're going to start the finish this, the new season strong. I'm a little bit more realistic than that. I want to know how close to this, to la where the finish last season at does this defensive line look? Uh, in training camp and how the, well they're going to start off things like that. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of them in preseason. I think we're going to see a lot of the depth uh, more so in a lot of Javon Dexter. But that's one of my biggest questions is because everybody thought that the Bears were going to focus on edge. We really didn't. We really didn't add much to the defensive line at all. The defensive line is primarily still the same outside of like right. the veterans and Keith Randolph that we've added there. And I think that the Bears have put such a big bet on Javon Dexter taking the leap. I, uh, I hope that it pays hit. off. I really hope that it pays off because if it doesn't, it could get a little ugly there is all I'm saying. It absolutely could. And I think that's a, a, a fair, matter of fact, a great question. Because, like, we 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 know that, you know, Unique and Gakwe has been out there and rumored, you know, just a little rumors or at least, you know, anticipated that he could come back to the Chicago Bears. But you're right. They don't really – and they're young. This offensive line is young. I mean, defensive line is very, very young. And yeah. they, just like you said, ended it. They putting a lot of pressure on uh Javon Dexter. He's gonna have to, he's gonna have to pop. Yeah. He's gonna have to. Yeah, we'll see, man. I mean, I have I have faith. Like, I, I mean, I was excited about Javon Dexter when they picked him. Um, you know, he didn't get in the game as much as I would have liked his rookie year, but they're basically saying, hey, he's he's making up for it. He's gonna be a day one starter, unless uh, barring anything crazy happening. And uh, I hope that he does have that leap that we want to see from a player that's just, like I I I always I'm I'm a guy who I love it when we draft players and they stay in the Bears uniform for a long time. That's just selfishly this what I, not to say that I don't like free agents that we bring in and stuff like because I love Montez Sweat, but I just it's something special about it when you draft that guy. That's why I'm That's so fact. happy that the Bears locked in Jalen Johnson because he's a guy that we drafted and uh he's he's continued to develop and take off to new heights. So that's a fact. And I think I'm 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 pulling for uh Javon Dexter for sure. Because I think he showed a lot. And I think that's what the Bears are banking on. Sometimes you got to go off what your eyes tell you and towards the end of the season. My eyes told me that this guy can be a starter for us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now it's just going to be up to him to prove that. You had an entire offseason to work. And now we just got to see it come to fruition. Because, Hayes, the last thing we want to do is have Montez Sweat out there in his prime, putting up numbers, and nobody else backing him up. Because we fact. already know he's going to get double team, sometimes triple team. And if the other it or the other the other side or the middle ain't taking advantage of that, it's, it's all for nothing, in my opinion. That's a fact. That's a fact. What's your next question, Bobby? My next question. This is for a number of Chicago Bears. Who's gonna seize the moment? 
It's a mm. lot of position. I wouldn't say a lot of positions, but it's some opportunity here for some players. Roshan Johnson, what you gonna do? Javon Dexter, what you gonna do? Zach Pickers, we ain't talking about you that much. What you gonna do? And last but not least, I just had to throw him in there. Vegas Jones, are you going to save your life? <laughs> you save your life? Because it really does come down to that. Because I know it's easy to think, well, another team will give him a try. With how bad Vegas has looked, I don't even know if he may have to go to Canada, bro, or the XFL. <laughs> hey, the XFL kickoff got the same rule. Yep. See, there you go. <laughs> Man, but yeah, who's going to seize the moment? It's a, it's a lot of uh, young players right here. They got opportunities right in front of them, and they can either rise to them or they can fall. Yep. And then I got a, I got a question for Bears fans. Hayes, what you think about it? Bears fans, how long y'all going to be patient with Caleb Williams <laughs> if he don't go out in week one and throw for 300 yards? <laughs> Bro, I can't wait to the first game because it's going to happen. That, <laughs> that, that Caleb Williams throws for either an interception that loses us the game or throws for three interceptions in a game. I can't wait to see Bears fans, bro, because you know we some knee jerky people, bro. <laughs> oh my God, I told. Oh my God, he's gonna be a bust. Oh my God, why did we do it? Like, and don't let, do not let any of the other. Don't let Michael Penix, for example, have a better game than than Kayla Williams one game, bro. It's gonna be over with. Bro. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be over with, especially if Jaden Daniels come out week one, two, three, and ball yeah. out. Oh, my God. Bears fans, how patient y'all going to be? Let us know down below. <laughs> That's a fact. My last question that I have for this team heading into it is not actually for any of the players. It's for Matt Eberfus. Mm. How much How much have you learned? How much better is this staff overall? You've revamped the offensive staff. You brought in a new defensive coordinator. How much better is the coaching situation here in Chicago from top to bottom? Is, does Shane Waldron live up to the hype? Does Matt Eberflus show that now with more veteran uh, 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 coordinators there, has he made a step as a coach? The development of Matt Eberflus, if the Bears are going to lock in with him and they're not going to fire him, which it doesn't seem like that's going to happen, it's just as important as the development of anybody else. It just is. So, I believe, yeah. I, if we're talking about questions, that's the number one. Year one, Matt Eberflus, you got your teeth kicked in. <laughs> yeah. But it was intentional. So you let people beat you up. Year two, you came out, you fought back a little bit, but you still lost some battles. You know, we ain't going to go through the historic games that you screwed up. I'm with you, oh, Hayes. I'm with you on this one, Hayes. Matt Eberflus, did you learn? Are you yeah. ready to win some fights now? We going to see. Yeah. And then um, just as a, as a quick one to throw in there, too, I, if this team does win early, I want to know what does if that changes anything for Ryan Poles at the trade deadline. Like We know we added Montez Sweat last year. We were winning more games technically. But I wonder if this team looks like it's a team that is going to make the playoffs by the trade deadline if we see a more aggressive Ryan Poles than what we've seen in the last couple of years. Hey, he's coming with that shit today. I'm telling you, that's <laughs> another great question because, hey, the, a few years ago, he swung. He missed for Chase Claypool. Yeah. Last year, he swung. He hit with Montez yes. Sweat. Now, if you say, hey, we putting up 24 points for points per game, we just met and we winning games, but we need that other edge. Do Ryan Poe say, hey, I got a second round pick for you again? We, yeah. we just ditching out too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At this point, it's just the second round picks. He's every season. What can we get for the second round pick this year? What you got for us? So. Right. Come on now. So I think that's a very, very intriguing one too because you've seen the Texans. They say, oh shit, we got CJ Stroud. Yeah. Let's go swing for the fences and go ahead and get Stefan Diggs. So they looking like they ready to push for something. We're going to see what the Bears are made of. We're going to see. Yeah, we're going to see, and we're going to be right here, man. Uh, any last thoughts, Bob, before we get up out of here, man? Nah, man, just always got to uh, pretty much thank the Bears fans for always supporting. Keep rocking and rolling. The football is here, baby. Let's go. Say hey, relationship. Man. Have the conversations with your spouses and your loved ones right now. Shout yeah. out to my people in the South. Right now. <laughs> Don't wait. <laughs> Don't wait until the first game on Hall of Fame Day. Have them conversations now. So y'all don't even got to worry about it. You could just sit up on it on Monday, Thursday, Sunday and drink your brew and kick your feet up.
Yeah, we don't want to see any broken marriages because of football, <laughs> but um, you know, sometimes you gotta let some things go. Anyway, with that said, man, make sure you guys are following us at Shot Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bear Central Gmail.com. Lastly, if you guys want to leave a text message and our voicemail number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, man. And for Bobby, you already know what to do. Shot town up. Bear down, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break.